These are the Universal Tool Scissors, and they're a really awesome antique multi-tool. Although patented in the US in 1901, there's a German patent from 1896 called Tool Pocket Scissors. And um, it came with a nice leather sheath when it was sold. Uh, you can see here this one has uh, seen a lot of wear and tear. Um, uh, the scissors are nickel plated, although you can see in some areas the nickel plating is coming off of mine because they're very old. These are an 18-in-1 function multi-tool based off of a scissor platform and they have a really awesome feature where they come apart. And we're going to take a look at all 18 of its functions. Uh, so let's start, of course, with the most obvious. These are scissors. But here's some scissors. And uh, that's nice, actually. You'll notice if I put them all the way up here, it has that little pinch. And we'll discuss why it does that in a second. So you really have to only use the tip of them, but they actually feel really good. Again, you have to make sure that you don't kind of go right into it because then there, that one function right here gets in the way and doesn't allow it to cut. But if you're just making small cuts and a lot of them, it cuts really well. Okay, so let's cut some paracord here. This is survival paracord. So it's not your standard paracord. And um, if I try to cut it here, it cuts it just fine. It requires a little bit of a try here. Now let's see the very tip. Oh, the tip requires a little bit of trying. Um, yeah, so it cuts that paracord just fine. Let's look at some various sizes of zip ties. Cuts it pretty good. And another size here. And it shoots the pieces. But it cuts all the way to the tip, which is nice. We have some duvetine material, which is uh, a thick um, denim type material. And that cuts it no problem. Let's look at this uh, cardboard. It's a little hard to cut cardboard just because they're so tiny and you only have this part of the blade that's actually usable. So let's try this one more time. Oh, okay, so this actually shows quite well what happens here if you go all the way to the edge of the scissors. It cuts in and does this, and that's actually a feature that I'll tell you about later, um, but in terms of uh, trying to cut, it really uh, it can be annoying. So you have to make sure that you don't open up the scissors too much when you're going. So cutting cardboard is pretty difficult. Before, when I choke up like this, it creates an issue where you see that right there, where it creates the hole, but it doesn't cut right there. And the reason it does that is because it, one function is the buttonhole scissors. So you'll notice this little piece right here actually comes out and that prevents the scissors from fully closing. And the way this works is, I'll show you on this material here. Um, it creates a perfect hole inside of the material for your button. And you can actually get it to be fairly small. So, so that's pretty small. Um, but, uh, but if I make it smaller, I can make a larger buttonhole. So now, here's a pretty big buttonhole. You probably already noticed there's these teeth on either side. And those are a gas pipe tong. Uh, the patent calls it a wrench. Um, the teeth are pretty aggressive, and uh, the patent mentions that when you're squeezing onto a pipe or something like that, let's grab something to show you here. So when you're squeezing onto a pipe, um, to get extra leverage, 
You can squeeze the tips of the blades down as well to get extra strength from the wrench. Back here, you'll notice these curved jaws and that's a cigar cutter. Um, now, I don't know if they would be good for anything else. I wonder, I guess they can cut this pretty well and it doesn't fling like the actual scissors do. So the next thing that you'll notice coming around here is you'll see this little tiny notch when you spread the scissors apart. And that's actually a wire cutter. So here is 18 gauge galvanized steel wire. And if we put this guy in here, you can actually cut the wire. They have a ruler all the way across this side. It's an eight centimeter ruler. And if you're trying to measure something, you'll notice that they won't sit flat. So if you want to actually measure something and you need to sit flat, you take off this guy and you have uh, five and a half centimeters from the tip to right here. And the next feature is called a measure, which again lists on this side. I'm not sure if that's a redundant thing or a separate feature. You tell me, because I, I don't know what they mean by what the difference between a ruler is and then a measure is. Um, maybe I've missed something. The next thing is on this side, we have this nail file, which is actually pretty decently aggressive. And you'll notice here, uh, the tip is flat and that's because it will act as a flathead or slotted uh, uh, screwdriver. Here is a banana four scale to show you just how tiny these scissors are. Uh, please subscribe. So next thing up is this tip right here. And that is a cigar box opener, or um, as I'm calling it, it's a package opener. So the nice thing about that is because we have the curved edge right here, when you're opening up a package, you can rest that on there and it will slide real well. And it allows you to open up a package or make cuts. And because this is resting on whatever you're cutting, it won't actually go deep into the package. I don't know if you've ever been opening up a package and you're cutting it and then it slips in and then it doesn't cut as well. This allows it to stay right on the outside of the package, which I think is kind of nice. Next is this little notch right here, which is a cartridge ext extractor which is for removing uh, like a spent cartridge or a stuck cartridge from a gun or pistol. I kind of want to test this here. I think this would be a good staple puller. So I think that's good for opening up staples. Uh, maybe not the best for opening up staples, but it, it was a fun thought I had. Yeah, it was a fun thought I had. So next up is the hammer feature, which is you can see this flat surface here. Um, and they expect you to use this kind of like this to hammer in things. So I don't really have a nail of anything, um, but I kind of show you here. You can get pretty decent force on this little guy. And I'm sure like for little tiny tack nails, uh, it would work well. It has a nice little tiny connector in the middle and you just twist and pull and you can take it apart. And the next thing they have here is this function on the side here, which is a pen knife or quite simply put just a little pocket knife um, for, you know, doing any kind of cuts. And it's not very sharp. On the tip here, there's two functions. There's this little, there's a little wheel that is a uh, glass cutter. Um, and what you would do is you would run it across like this. And you can see here, I made that line, that paper as I was doing that. And what that would do is make little tiny um, kind of cracks in the glass. And you would come in afterwards with this little notch and you would insert it in there like that and then you'd pop to 
cut the glass all the way down and break it where you just scored it with this little tiny wheel here. So on the other side of the handles, you have this little tiny uh, spur looking guy here. Looks, you know, from cowboy time. And this is a marking wheel. So I'll grab some more paper over here just to kind of show you what's happening here. And either on your fabric or whatever you're making, it makes a straight little line there that you can follow for whatever pattern you're doing without ruining what you're working on. You can see the mark that it puts in there. So that's actually pretty useful. So on this thin bit right here, it lists it as an ink eraser. And uh, I have a test here. And I'm just scraping off paper at this point. So I don't see how it erases ink. Maybe it's a different type of ink or maybe it's referring to something else because this is from the 19, you know, early 1900s. So maybe I'm missing something here. So on another document, I saw this listed as a, a razzing knife, raising knife, I'm not sure how you would pronounce that. And the final feature here, we actually have to pull out some money here, okay? So you might have noticed already in this handle, there's a little piece right there. It's listed as two different things, um, a stereoscope or a Stanhope lens. If you hold this bit up right up to your eye, Many of these scissors came with a little tiny picture inside of like the Eiffel Tower or something like that. Um, mine doesn't have that. But the interesting thing about a Stanhope lens is that it can be used as a makeshift uh, microscope. I have a random, just a standard Canadian $5 banknote. If I put this right up against it, okay, and I'm going to bring the camera up to here and we're going to see if we can what we can see here. So, the advertising and everything like that says that this tool is made to service office men, bankers, traveling salesmen, or the housewife. And being in service to others is a great thing to do. This means choosing to take part in the world without expectation or reciprocation because you want to help others and not because you want others to help you. Thanks for watching.